Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So if you remember, we were doing the relational algebra operations using MapReduce concept. So if you remember, these were the different operations that can be performed in relational algebra. In the previous video, we have covered the selection operation with its algorithm and example. In this particular video, we'll be stressing on the projection operation with algorithm as well as example. So let's have a look at the projection algorithm. So if we have three attributes, name, age and salary, and if you want to project only name and age, so in that case, we can use this projection algorithm. So let's see that our subset which contain the different attributes that we want to get projected be stored in the variable s. So s will be representing that particular subset of the selected attributes. So this will be used in the algorithm. As you know that the map reduce algorithm has two tasks map and reduce. In the map task we will be iterating over all the values and each value will be stored in the tuple. Now we will have a variable which will store all the tuples that only contains the attributes which are specified in the variable s. For example, if we are having the attribute name and age that is to be projected, then all the records which are present under the attribute name and age will be stored in the variable ts. And finally, this tuples that are stored inside the ts variable will be emitted. So that was the map task. Now inside the reduce task, we will be specifically emitting the key that is associated with the selected tuples. So I hope the algorithm is clear. Now keeping this algorithm in mind, we will be solving this particular example of projection. Here we are going to project the columns B and C. Our map worker 1 and 2 contains the tables which contains three columns each a b and c we will be focusing on the columns b and c and we will be selecting only those records which are present under the attribute b and c so let's solve this step by step with the help of the algorithm so as you can see the map worker 1 contains three attributes a b and c in and the condition says to project these two columns b and c so the s variable which is a subset that contains all the selected attributes will contain these two columns b and c so basically the final output will contain all the record which are under this b and c column like this now if we carefully see the algorithm first we need to iterate over all the values and store it inside a temporary variable tuple then we will be specifying this particular variable which will store all the tuples which are satisfying this particular condition of only selecting those attributes which are present in the s variable so as you know that the map task converts the records in the form of key value pairs so we will have to convert every record in the form of key value pairs each map worker will be working independently so let's try to form the key value pairs of all the records in the first map worker first and then we'll move on to the second map worker so let's start the first record is one two three but since we are concerned with all the records under the b and c attribute hence we'll write two comma three in the key and the same 2 comma 3 in the value section similarly the next record is 1 comma 4 we'll write it under the key as well as under the value section next we have 2 comma 3 again now you can see that in the entire database if we see we already have a key 2 comma 3 hence we can append it inside the value this will avoid the network congestion Next we have 3 comma 4 which is a distinct key hence we will write one new record for it. Now we are done with the map worker 1. 
Next, we will move on to map worker 2. So, the record is 7 and 2. So, we will write the key value as 7, 2. Next, we have 1, 1. So, we will write the key as 1, 1 and the value also as 1, 1. Now, next we have 2 and 5. We will write separate key value for it. And then we have finally 1 and 0. So, we will make the key value pair of it. So, finally we are done with the conversion. Now, if you remember in selection after the conversion into key value pairs, we were applying a hash function. This hash function will divide the entire key value table in parts. So let's do that. Note that this hash function will be applied separately on all the map worker nodes. So as we have very few records in our key value table, we'll be only separating the entire key value table into two parts in each map worker node. So hence we'll divide the entire table by two. So let me quickly create all the tables of key value pairs. So you can see that in the first map worker, the first record is 2,3. So we will write it in the first key value table. So you can see that the original key value table consists of three values. Hence, we will write the first two values in the first key value table and the remaining value in the next key value table. Note that these map workers will be separately working. Now we will move on to the second map worker node and we will divide the first two values and we will keep that in the first table and the next two values will be in the next table. So let me quickly write all the tuples separately in this two key value table. Now we are done with this. Now why we are dividing the entire key value table into two parts is to swap the second table from the map worker 1 to the first table from the map worker 2. The reason behind swapping them is to discard the redundancies of the keys that may be present in both the map workers. So it will be used for that. Now this swapping task will be done with the help of reducers. So now our map workers will get converted into reduce workers. So again you need to create 4 tables and now in this particular case you will be writing the first and the fourth table the same as we already have done in the previous task and you just have to swap the second and the third table. So after writing this it will look something like this. Everything is same only I have swapped the second table with the third table. Note that the second and the third table are from different workers. We'll have to swap them with the adjacent workers. Now once we are done with the swapping, we will again make a single key value table which will comprise of the same tuples with no redundancies. So let me quickly make the structure of the key value table in both the reducer workers. So now I am done with it. Now you can see that the first tuple is 2,3. So we will write it as it is. Similarly we have the next tuple as 1,4. We will write it. Now next we have the tuple 7,2 in the second table of the same reduce worker. And similarly we will write the fourth tuple 1,1. So we are done with the formation of a single table of key value in the reducer worker 1. Similarly, we will do it for the reducer worker 2. So, you can note one thing that we are not getting any redundancies. Hence, the total number of tuples are one and the same. So, we are finally done with forming a single key value pair table. So, now we are almost done. Now, let's write the last step and get our projected columns. So if you remember in the question, we were having three attributes A, B and C. 
out of which B and C were concerned. Hence, we will write two columns for it, one for B and other for C. Same we will do it for the other reducer worker node also. Something like this. Once we are done with the creation of the structure of B and C columns, we will now focus only on the key part of the result that we have got from the previous step. Also you can see in the algorithm, we are just supposed to emit the key part. Our key part contains 2 and 3. So this depicts that the first part is of the column B and the second part is of the column C. So 2 comes under B and 3 comes under C. Similarly 1 will go with B and 4 will go with C and so on. The same logic will be applied for the next reduce worker node also. 3 comma 4, 2 comma 5 and 1 comma 0 will be written separately in B and C columns. And there we go. We have finally got our projected columns. These columns will contain all the records which comes only under the column B and C. And note one thing, we have found it with the help of the algorithm which MapReduce tells us. You can verify this with the manual method that we usually do for projecting particular set of columns. You will get the same answer. So I hope you have got the entire terminology of this MapReduce algorithm for projecting some set of columns from the entire database. I am sure you won't be getting any difficulties in understanding this but in case if you get a single doubt then do post it in the comment section. I will be happy to answer it. And also don't forget to share your suggestions and reviews on this particular video. For more such videos, do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching.